Hello and welcome. Exciting topic today. Getting real-time option prices and also other option metrics with Python. First off, to have a good baseline of options, I recommend to watch my mini-series on how options work so you can better follow along. Secondly, I want to go over the Binance Options website to show you how options are looking like here, so you get a better understanding of what data you're actually pulling with Python. What you see here is a table showing different option metrics. On the left hand side you see the call options, while on the right hand side you see the put options. In the middle you have the expiry date of the option, so in this case this option expires end of June this year. You can pick different expiries in this ribbon here. Just below that you see the strike prices. And if you scroll a bit down you even have a line showing the current underlying price from where you can derive the moneyness of the option. Important metrics for now is the mark, this way here, which is the option price based on black skulls. The cool thing here is, if you have followed along my option mini-series, you know exactly how to calculate this value both for call and put options. So go ahead and give it a shot. You have some other columns hidden here, which you can pull, such as only options around at the money, by checking this box here, which is the line I just showed you, as well as a range of strikes. And also you can pull other Greeks here, so such as Gamma, Vega, Tita, and so on. That's it for the Binance website point of view. So let's jump into Python to get a live stream of real-time option metrics. All right, let's get started. We need three libraries, WebSocket, JSON, and Pandas. I'm not going over details on how to use the WebSocket library, as I've covered that in some of my previous videos. I will link one in the description below. I'm basically just using the library as it is used in the official library documentation, so there is no real magic behind that. JSON we just need for translation. So we want to post a message to the WebSocket server. Therefore, we need JSON and we also want to translate from the server to Python. This is the point of using the JSON library. And Pandas is helping us with some data handling, data manipulations. Now, the most important thing here is to define the endpoint. And that is simply from the Binance API documentation. I'm just going to copy paste that here. So this is the relevant endpoint here. So you see European options, WebSocket stream we have as the endpoint, and that's it. I will try to uh, write that into the video description so you don't have to type that for yourself. Or I'm just linking the Binance API documentation. You can copy paste that from there. Next, we need a message which we are sending to the server. And this message should contain what we actually want to subscribe to. So first of all, I'm defining my message, just calling that our message. You can call that whatever you like. And then I'm using JSON dumps to just transform a Python dictionary to a JSON formatted object and define method as subscribe because I want to subscribe to a certain stream here. So in our case, uh, an options stream, and then you have to define what exactly, so what exact option stream as there are several of them you want to subscribe to. So you're just defining parameters here, so params, and then you pass a list of streams you want to subscribe to. So first off, let's start with the Bitcoin at mark price stream. And this providing you every single price, so the mark price, that Black Skulls calculated price, so the fair value of the option price for Bitcoin. And it will give you all, meaning all expiries, all strikes. So you will see you are getting a very messy data stream, which we will taking care of in some seconds. Then you have to provide an ID that's just 
some random integer I'm using one here. So this is our message. So to summarize, what does this message do? It's just subscribing to the Bitcoin option mark price stream, which is providing you all black skulls prices or all option premiums for the Bitcoin, meaning all expiries and all what's the other one strikes. So that's our message. Now let's send this message to the server. So therefore we have to define a function on open. That's again from the WebSocket library. This one, WS, we will define in some seconds. And then we are using this WS send and we are sending our message to subscribe to the Bitcoin mark price stream. Now we need to define what is happening when we receive something from the server. So we define on message again, WS and message. And here I'm just defining that as output or out. And we just transfer the JSON formatted message and translate that into a Python dictionary. So out will be a Python dictionary. You will see that in some seconds. And this is just loading the message. And then we want to print out that message. And with that, we have basically set up everything we need to get started streaming option prices. So next we have to define this WS, which is just a copy paste from the WebSocket library. I'm just copy pasting that from my other screen here. So WS is WebSocket.WebSocket app is taking our endpoint, which is the option endpoint here. So in specific, the WebSocket option endpoint, because of course there's also the historical prices option endpoint, but we want to have the WebSocket endpoint here as we want to stream real time data. This one is a, yeah, just telling the WebSocket stream that whenever we are getting a message, it, it should execute this function. And this function is simply loading that message as a Python dictionary and is printing it out. And on open, we are just providing our message, which is again, a subscription to the Bitcoin option mark price stream. Now we want to run this forever. So WS run forever. And when I execute this line here, we will get a stream of all Bitcoin option prices for all expiries and all strikes. So let me show you how this is looking like. And you see, we're getting this mess of a stream containing a lot of data, but I will show you that it looks more complicated than it actually is. So let's just take the first one here, the first dictionary. This one is quite straightforward. So you have a symbol here S, which is Bitcoin, of course. Then you have an expiry, which is end of June, the one I just showed you on the uh, trade screen or on the option screen. Then we have a strike, which is 15 K and we have the direction. So this is just a call. So the mark price for a 15 K strike price with an expiry in June 24 has a mark price of 48.8 K ish, right? So let's confirm by just jumping to the uh, interface, the option interface here. So 15K strike for a call, 48 point, and now it's seven, probably some, some movement here. So let's just call that again, getting fresh data, directly stopping that. So we have 48.7K, 48.7K. So you're just getting this value for the uh, 15K strike call June expiry. And this, this uh, uh, principle is just applied on the next dictionary you see here. And this is now just the June expiry, 15K put. And here you have a mark price of 14. So if you jump over here, 
and take for the strike 15k you have a mark of 14. I think you got the point right and if you go through this whole construct here you will just see different strikes different expiries and so on right so let's yeah, get some order in it here so we have it in a more let's say visually appealing way so let's just take this uh, yeah, let's just call that data frame use a data frame function on this out dictionary or out list here to be more specific and then print out this data frame and then you will see something like this so now you have it more structured so you have a symbol here then the mark price and you see that this data frame which has 600 rows will get updated every second here right so this is just providing you fresh data every single second so this is a live stream so as a good example here you see the june expiry 15k strike call and you have this mark price and then one second later it's already this mark price here right and so on so you have a live stream of all option prices here which is quite nice so you can do some data filterings for only those uh, expiries and strikes you're interested in but this is already uh, a cool thing to pull via the api now let's dig a bit deeper into pulling also some very interesting option metrics such as the option greeks therefore you have to subscribe to another stream here so if you change this message here you can take a certain option so a certain expiry and a certain strike and the direction so call a put and you have to define it as that here so it's not enough to just pull bitcoin here but you have to define the option so let's just take our 15k june call here and put that in here and then you just define that at ticker and now execute that again redefine the on open message and just yeah, get rid of this for now and keep it as before so print out and this will provide you some very interesting insights here that is for this call option 15k june you will get a live stream now of all relevant metrics you saw on this table here including the hidden columns gamma vega theta leverage open volume and so on so you get a real-time stream of deltas gammas vegas and so on so you will see it here so it's a bit cryptic but you will get to it very very fast so mp again is the mark price so just the fair value you also get the uh, where it is the vega here you get the volatility you get the rho you get the theta here you get the delta here and so on right so you get a live stream of all the option metrics you which are relevant and yeah i think that's it for this video that's a very good starting point i think and i mean you can make a lot of out of this right but the first step I would do is basically just reconcile those numbers. So understand how these numbers are calculated. So how is the delta calculated, how is the gamma calculated, the theta, and start with the mark price. Start to understand how this mark price is calculated. So yeah, if you are interested in those kind of topics, let me know. And I thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the upcoming videos. Bye bye.